There's no way that anyone from New Zealand ever gets to travel to Canada and do something as cool as this. And so I'm super, super lucky and everyone's super jealous, which makes it even cooler. Tonight is the premiere for the Moto Social Toronto. This is the first edition of the year. People are expecting about a thousand bikes. So yeah, tonight is the night. Everyone that I've ever met from Canada is really cool. Maple leaves, hockey, maple syrup, a boot. It's all good stuff. We turn up and there's just bike after bike after bike streaming in. It was massive, just beautiful, organized chaos. Let me introduce you to Jay. Hey, Jay. Dan, nice to meet you. Dan, he's a very talented photographer. He's working with Arla Davidson and he's a super nice guy. The vibe was exactly the same as I was expected. It was just like a Montreal Moto Social, but just way bigger. Victor Radzik, this is the guy who started the whole Moto Social thing, and he's a good friend of mine and motorcycle enthusiast. The community was segregated based on how you looked, what kind of bike you rode, how you dressed. So I was like, let's try to bring everyone together and we will like each other. I definitely didn't expect the numbers. I didn't expect the bikes which is all good to see. And it's a great breeding ground for love and enthusiasm for motorcycles. It's just awesome. I think this is what the motorcycle scene is all about right now. This very strong sense of community. Pretty cool getting out of Toronto. As soon as we hit the countryside, completely different to what I'm used to at home. Things here is really different and really quite pretty and quite picturesque and there's a lot of straight riding, but still cool to be able to soak it up and, and check it all out. Before we knew it, we're starting to get into some rain. It's better to have the rain right now than this morning anyway. Yeah, totally. It's not like we've got any really sharp corners to ride around and slide out on. Yeah. We headed on to this place called the Biker Church, which is completely different to any other church that anyone would ever see. It looks like a motorcycle clubhouse. Hillbilly and the pastor were just such awesome guys. Hillbilly talked through his whole life story and how he had a really interesting path of sort of not so great choices. So what's the story in behind how did the Bikers Church come about? I was uh, an alcoholic, crack cocaine addict, and living kind of a outlaw biker lifestyle. And it was pretty much killing me at that point. So I got into a faith-based uh, rehab center. And then out of that, we birthed Bikers Church. Essentially, motorcycle saved his life. It's what turned him around. And since he's been through that, he can act as a shepherd for those people that are making those bad choices. And go, You know what, I've been there before. When I walked away from the whole lifestyle of alcohol and drugs, it still provided a, an avenue for me where I could get out on a motorcycle and enjoy the riding aspect of being a biker. It was really getting me back on track as who I was as a person, you know. Another thing that I've noticed here in Canada is that when people ride, they ride far. And I think you get a greater sense of pride for your country when you've seen more of it. The experiences I've had riding a Harley in Canada, um, I could write a book. Hallelujah. <laughs> Har that's a good one. I love that you guys are getting it done. Right now? Once again, some incredible people doing some incredible things and providing a big communal group that looks out for one another. Yeah, it's the strangest thing having headpieces connecting myself to Edouard, because I sing in all sorts. I do heaps of annoying things. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. Whether it's sunny or whether it's wet, the scenery is the thing that you always kind of pick up on. Some awesome winding roads and some incredible forestry and just lakes everywhere. It's a really, really beautiful part of Canada. Well, one thing we can say, I mean, the rain gear is good. I got water inside my helmet. <laughs> Welcome to Quebec. <laughs> and instantly, everything's in French. What the f***? <laughs> Bonjour. It started to really pull the trip towards Edouard and how he grew up. We caught up with an incredible group of people called Ladies and Gentlemen. I call them my my motorcycle mentors. I'm super happy <laughs> that we just find, you, you, we got the chance to meet these guys because, yeah. I mean, and I said it previously, but these are the reason why I started my motorcycle at first. When I started, I, I mean, I had no friends who, who were riding, uh, so I bumped into these guys over the internet. They were so welcoming with me, and I mean, this is where I, just, I realized that Motorcycle is one thing, but the spirit behind the motorcycle is, it, that's a whole yeah. different thing. Yeah. Really slick setup. we got to ride with them. Really cool, it, that's real traditional, great club riding where everyone's looking out for one another, there's hands up, I don't even know what they were, so I was all over the joint. Edouard was at the back, I normally just follow his lead, but I was kind of tucked up in the pack there. From Montebello, we, we hit the road, 
Things start really ramping up, really ramping up as we get towards Montreal. Stop at the 63, which is a super nice shop in Montreal where both thrift store, vintage stuff, and motorcycle stuff. We will meet the girls that are members of the motorcycle scene in Montreal. Hello. Hello. Hi. 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 How are you? If the weather permit, we will go uh, on a ride with Jay. We kind of similar to what we call the Sasquatch ride, which is like riding with fur coats. 63 is a cool shop. It's my it's my cup of tea. Like I can understand why people hang out there. I have no idea where the white wolf fur coat came from. I don't think it was there. Oh my god! Oh, oh so man! We just run this one then. Yeah. Okay. I mean, on the low rider ass. What do you think of that? You look like a Sasquatch. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I think it as a compliment. But the Sasquatch ride is a great way, from what I can gather, of seeing the city and seeing how awesome it is. There's parts of Montreal that we can't ride into, but. Catherine let us out and that's really cool. I really am loving seeing the number of females riding Harley Davidson starting to dramatically increase and to see um, Montreal <laughs> in, a white, in a white wolf fur coat. Oh, she, was, she was special to say the least, it was very special. Strange, probably more strange, that added to the specialness of it. But it was nice to almost be in traffic so that I could see everything that was going on around me because if I was punching it to the front of every line and splitting lanes and skipping traffic, I would have missed it all. The beautiful bridges, the amazing architecture, the miserably, miserably upkeep of the roads, the shocking roads in Montreal but the beautiful parks and then up onto uh, Mont Royal uh, to see the whole city sort of roll out behind us. After the Sasquatch ride, we will, uh, yeah, there's a bar opening, uh, the MR250, uh, which is like the first motorcycle team bar that's opening and the party's tonight. Wherever you go with Edouard, everyone is just always there and ready to help out or party or, or do something cool. He just really got sort of a gravitational pull. Awesome people want to hang out with him and as a result of awesome people hanging out with other awesome people, awesome things happen. We hit the road after Montreal. We had some Ks to put down to get to Quebec City. This place is awesome. Oh yeah, I'm glad you like it. We're gonna stop at Hardcore Cycle, this crazy shop in Portneuf. My friend Pat Destureau. He's one of the greatest builders I know, but he also like this beautiful energy, so I'm really stoked that Jay, we're gonna get to meet him. Rolled right into the middle of his shop and Pat's in a barber chair getting his hair cut and there's a guy playing guitar and there's just, once again, it's Charles de Wa. He's got that special thing that, where he just attracts amazing people. I love working on bikes, it's my passion. I'd rather work on a bike than ride a bike. Every time I work on something, it's, it's gotta be nice, it's gotta be well done and uh, Everything's gotta be really great. With the resurgence of the bike culture, we kind of wanted to know where our roots were from and that's exactly what Pat's doing in the customization of bikes. And like you said, he's an artist. As an artist sometimes, I, I guess it might be difficult, for example, if you're a painter, you know, just when this painting is, is done. You tell me where I stop, because yeah. I'm not gonna stop you. <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah, crazy. It's, this is something you see in cool videos, like in California or something yeah. like that. And then we all realize that, whoa, we have this in Quebec, you know? I mean, how can you ask for more? I see it as a destination, you know? Mm. Like from Quebec or Montreal, hey, let's go out hardcore cycle, get my beard trim, or uh, let's go have a beer, uh, have a coffee, you know? If I was to kind of compare the New Zealand scene and what my friends are like and what we're up to, that's pretty much exactly it, but a um, Quebecois version of it. Do you mind if we just hang out, watch you drink beer, maybe get a haircut? <laughs> I was really proud. I mean, yeah, that, that's, that's the word, I think. I was really proud because the whole point of this was to show Jay from New Zealand what's the motorcycle culture uh, here in Ontario and Quebec. And I mean, these guys from Quebec, I mean, they, they nailed it. They totally nailed it. I mean, this is exactly what we are and who we are. That was just perfect. We met a great bunch of guys and we all rode into Quebec City. So this is the next generation of Harley riders. You got the best of it right now. I think we're good for another 100 years. It was cool just sitting at the back and being led in by sort of six other guys riding bikes and it's an individual pursuit which can be enjoyed as a collective and that's something really special about riding. My friend Fred owns a crazy snack bar and it's Obviously, you have to try the poutine, mandatory when you're visiting. 
I've been wanting to tick off certain things that you need to achieve in a trip to Canada, and poutine is one of them. There are 15 different types of poutine, and so I probably consumed about half of my body weight in potatoes and cheese curd and gravy. There's a need for me to get a serious handle on the way that I eat, or I will more than likely develop a coronary disease after this trip. <laughs> Wrapped up a great night in Quebec City, and I got to tick off the best poutine in all of Quebec. Should we go for a run and maybe have a salad and <laughs> have a green smoothie? And when we woke up in the morning, it was a little bit drizzly, and um, we ran down through uh, old Quebec City. Riding through Quebec City was I could have been somewhere in Europe. The architecture was just painstakingly beautiful. There's this massive castle in behind a big fortified wall that just rings around the city until we jumped on the ferry to punch it across to the other side. And you look back and you're just like, man, this place is just insane. Yeah, so today we're gonna take the ferry from uh, Quebec City, so the old part of the city. We go across the St. Lawrence River to Lévis. When, when you're riding, certain parts of your body get cold. Your knees get quite cold. If it's wet, your feet get cold. Your upper body's only quite rugged up, so it doesn't get cold, but there's a funneling effect which goes straight into your downstairs area. And at that altitude, I don't even know how high we were, but it felt we were very mountainous. It was pretty cold. Um, so I managed to get a coffee cup from this, this lovely lady at the service station and fashion a, almost a cricket box, if you will. Um, once again, another one of Jay's hot tips for, for riding in Quebec is to cover your downstairs operation with a coffee cup to save it from freezing off because I'm sure that it, it could have been snapped off. And we finally caught up um, with the famed Rico. And so off we rode with him leading us out to this cavern. So we can end our journey with, uh, yeah, with a real taste of the Quebec uh, and Canadian culture. I think really wrapped up the trip quite well, kind of literally because we couldn't ride any further. So we have no choice, this is, and we cannot go any further because of the, it's like, it's like that, but with ice. So we went off sort of a, a little muddy trail and then walked the last couple of hundred meters to his cabin, which is this beautiful log cabin that his grandfather built. This is, I mean, this is the best it, you, you can get. You just, you ride all day and you just end up with a fire pit, a couple of beers, some friends, the view over the lake, and this really uh, genuine and raw energy at the same time. That cabin was, was the end of the road, like, metaphorically in a way because this is this is where our journey ends for me and Jay we're gonna go separate ways from now to me I think that this was the the, the missing part of the whole the, the whole road trip from what we've saw we needed that that part to be a complete road trip you think you know who you are you think you know what you what you live into but when you have someone from the outside just come in and say I like this this is so cool wow you got that <laughs> it's like yeah, I mean, we, that's all I know, but now I mean, I, I'm going to have a different perspective on it, I think. It's just been the raddest trip, man, and you know, you put together a, you put together a mad slice of heaven for me to experience, and for that, man, I'll, I'll be forever grateful, so. Cool, man. Cheers, man. Cheers. A couple more of these. Yep, 